everyone. Uh, today's video is on the Cardinal Tetra. Uh, I'll just be running over a um, couple of things, especially how I keep them. Um, yeah, things like that. Um, so, as many of you will probably know, and I'll attempt to pronounce now, uh, is Parahuerodon X Axelrodi. Hold on, I got it written down right here. Parahuerodon Axelrodi. If that's anywhere near close. Um, alright. Um, I'll talk about a couple of stuff, you'll hear about them in the video, I suppose. <laughs> Enjoy. Okay, so here's my school of cardinal tetra. As you can see, it's not purely cardinal tetra. There are three neon tetra in there. And they are very cr closely related, though, so they school together and do fine. Um, firstly, uh, we should talk about the basics of their environment. Um, cardinal tetra, uh, in my experience, are quite lenient when it comes to temperature. I've kept them from 22 degrees right up to 28 degrees without any issues. Um, I probably wouldn't go much below 22 degrees, but yeah, that's just my experience. Uh, pH-wise, also relatively forgiving. I've had them up to about 7.5, I think, maybe even higher, right down to about, I think they go pretty low because they come from Blackwater um, streams in South America. Um, well, yeah, I think I just stated the origin, South American Blackwater streams. Um, yeah, what else can I say? Feeding. Um, I feed them very small um, granules. Um, they enjoy this. I also feed them live daphnia and frozen bloodworms a couple of times a week. They really enjoy that, and especially the daphnia. They go native for that. Um, sexing. Unfortunately, I think I have all male cardinal tetra, so I won't be able to show you exactly what, but um, I do have some neon tetra, and I think it's relatively sim similar. Uh, in it is that females are larger, have a more round, plump body, and also the blue fluorescent um, stripe uh, is sort of bent in sort of uh, a hard to describe fashion. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, what else can I say? I, I think that they're a fantastic fish, they're great for aquascaping, very common, although in New Zealand they are very expensive. Um, very easy to look after fish. They're not very demanding. Um, breeding is very difficult and I've heard of very few cases of people breeding them. I'm not sure if I can say much more, apart from the fact that they're very simple to keep fish. Um, disease hardy in my experience. Eat easily. Yeah, they're very enjoyable fish and I never get tired of them. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed. Alright, now for something completely unrelated to the topic. Um, I was talking to some people on some forums, and they reckoned I say stuff funny. Well, what if I turned the tables and said you say stuff funny? It's all a, all a matter of point of view, my friend. Anyway, I've compiled a list of things that I apparently say funny. But I actually named this list things Americans so funny. So take that, you finger pointing bunch of people. Number one, Antarctica. Number two, tomato, not tomato. And it's a tomato. Got it? Potato. Chips. Chips a chip. You get a chip at McDonald's, you get a chip in a lunch pa uh, lunchbox. Round, crispy thing. Long, potato y thing. But, by the potato, not the point. Same thing. Avocado. Pool. Apparently you say pool funny, right? Shout out. CO2. Contest. Crypts. Apparently they say crypts funny, alright. Substrate. Alright, I think I actually do say that one funny. Uh, aquarium. Mm hmm. And now it gets a little bit interesting. Platypus. Mm hmm. Apparently said platypus funny. Alright, well, unfortunately that's it for Tom's list of funny things Americans say. 
Till next time, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. Alright, uh, one more thing. Jacob, Red Bull Schedule 11. This one's for you.